You know, sometimes when cars are not running right, they might be running lean or they might be running rich, and you're suspecting an oxygen sensor. And you want to know, is that oxygen sensor correct? Is it telling you the truth? Is it actually rich or is it actually lean? One of the best ways to do it is actually force that oxygen sensor to report rich or lean. Okay, first off, why should we do this? Well, you know, we rarely drive steady. The conditions are always fluctuating. Speed, load, altitude, temperature, and even engine wear. And the oxygen sensor signals are constantly fluctuating as well. And because of all of those fluctuations, it's hard to know if what you are seeing is just variations to those changing conditions or a real problem. So if we actually force it lean or rich, we eliminate the changing driving conditions and can actually see if the sensor is telling us the truth. Makes sense, right? So how do we do that? We're working on a 98 Plymouth Voyager, the 3.3 engine. Now in this case, we've got one free cat or one upstream oxygen sensor, and it happens to actually be mounted over the top of the intake, and it's very hard to get to it. You can actually see it from underneath, but you can't get to the wires very well to tap into it, and you can't hardly get to it from the front. But if you look right down here, the wires from the oxygen sensor, which are way back there, actually come right up in here. So all we have to do is expose the wire right here. And if you look at the wiring diagram, it's a black with a dark green. We tap into the wire right there, and now it's easy to access and test. Now it's true. We usually tap into a signal wire to see the live signal, right? But not this time. Instead, we are tapped into the wire to force it lean or rich. I know, you thought the way to do that was by creating an air leak or adding fuel, like propane. Well, that does work, but I'm sure that you've noticed that most newer vehicles these days don't have easy access to vacuum ports anymore, and adding propane or spraying carb cleaner into the air duct is a little bit risky and hard to control. Wouldn't it be nice to have a way that made it easy? Now let me explain what I'm talking about. The oxygen sensor is a voltage generator and it generates a sine wave. It is actual voltage that varies as the conditions vary. The signal is sent to the ECM or engine computer. A sine wave is what we call an analog signal. Computers are digital devices. They cannot read an analog signal they can only read a digital signal. So that analog signal is converted to a digital signal that the computer can read. Now we're looking at the oxygen sensor on the scanner. So we're reading scanner, live scanner data. We're not using the lab scope to tap into the sensor. So we're seeing what the computer is seeing. So as you see over here, we've got the upstream O2 in volts, and we've got the short-term fill trend. Now right now this car is actually running fine. The O2 is switching and the short term is keeping it pretty close to about zero. You can see zero is right there and we're switching somewhere down close to zero and up around one volt. If we raise the RPM you can see it again more better. But we want to test this at idle. Now you know an oxygen sensor to read correctly should drop down pretty close to about zero, actually about 100 millivolts, and go up to about 900 millivolts. That should be its operating range. But the extremes would be actually zero and one volt. So if we can force this to its extremes, we ought to be able to see the short term react to that. That would tell us that the oxygen sensor is good, it's reporting true, and the computer is seeing it and it's adjusting correctly. So how are we going to do that? Now how do we do it? Now many of you already know how to introduce external air and fuel, right? But that is hard to control. How much fuel or air are you actually introducing? And won't the computer automatically start compensating for it anyway? Well there is a simpler and more controlled way. Well the simplest way as we're tapped into that wire and then I've got it 
alligator clip wire on here. We're just going to take this alligator clip and we're going to touch it to ground. So we're going to force that oxygen sensor a zero volt signal. So I'm going to take my alligator clip, I'm going to attach it to the ground, and if you watch the oxygen sensor, you should see it immediately go to ground, and if you watch it short term, it's rising, it's adding fuel. So what's happening here? I am tapped into the signal wire from the oxygen sensor that is currently sending a fluctuating voltage signal, and I am jumping it to a constant system ground that is not fluctuating so I know exactly what I'm adding. And you can see that the short-term fuel trim immediately maxed out and stays there. Now when I take the ground off, the oxygen sensor should start responding again and the fuel trim is coming down. So I just force the oxygen sensor to ground and that tells us the oxygen sensor is capable of reading a lean condition and it's capable of telling the fuel trim through the fuel trim to add fuel and it's adding fuel. Now what about the other side? How do we make it drive rich? Now the only source of power we have on this car is the battery and that's going to be 12 volts. But if you think the oxygen sensor is supposed to respond between 0 and 1 volt, so I can't just touch it to the positive because that would give it 12 volts. So how do I go from 12 volts down to 1? I need to introduce resistance into that circuit somehow and drop it from 12 volts to 1 volt. The simplest way to do that is just to let me be the resistance. Now wait a minute. What do you mean? Good question. According to the effect of electric current on the human body, when the human body encounters electrical energy, it serves as a conductor and forms the closest path to complete the circuit to ground. That's why we get shocked. And of course, depending on one size, the average human body has about a thousand ohms of electrical resistance when your skin is wet. And by using an ohms calculator and inputting a thousand ohms, we can calculate that household voltage will give us 0.11 amps of current, which is easily enough to be dangerous. And again, by using the same ohms calculator, inputting the same 1000 ohms, we can calculate that automotive voltage of 12 volts with a thousand ohms of resistance will give us 0 0.012 amps of current. So it is possible, yet not very likely, that you could have a mild sensation by touching the battery positive with your finger and grounding the car battery. Now again, by using the same Ohm's Law calculator, inputting the same 1000 ohms, we can calculate that the voltage generated by an oxygen sensor with a thousand ohms of resistance will give us about 0 0.001 amps of current, which is so small it is way, way below any danger level and not likely to even be felt. So I'm going to take the same wire that's tapped into the signal wire of the oxygen sensor. I'm going to hold it in one hand and I'm going to touch my other hand to the battery positive. I'm going to be the resistance. You should drop it down to one volt. You should see it in the oxygen sensor. One volt means it will go up to one volt. I'm just going to lick my fingers and get a better connection and touch the positive. You should see the O2 go to one volt and it suddenly did. And you can see the fuel trim starting to pull fuel away. Now we've pegged it out at one volt on the resistance. So when I let go of that positive, you can see the oxygen drop back down, the fuel temp start rising again, and the computer's going to again start adjusting fuel. As soon as it gets up here, we should see the oxygen sensor start to switch again. So at this point, we have forced that oxygen sensor to recognize a rich condition, to read one volt. And when it did, the PCM recognized that. Through short term, it told it to start pulling fuel away. It's too rich. So you saw the short term go down. So at this point, we've just tested the oxygen sensor and confirmed that it is good. And we've done it by really having to gain access to a difficult positioned oxygen sensor. We just find the wire that we need in the wire loom 
tap into it and conduct our test. So the key here is understanding the sensor, understanding fuel trail, and understanding how to get access. If you have a component that is buried, you might have to spend a little bit of time looking at the wiring diagram and your pin out and things like that. Find a good access point to the wire, tap into the wire, use the scanner, and you can test it.